Whether new shooter, longtime gun owner, or even police officer or soldier, your handgun needs a Crimson Trace laser sight or light. Get the confidence and reliability you need to protect family, home, and country. Crimson Trace. I'm a gun owner. Your views, advice, and questions are the driving force of gun talk. You know, I don't think that guns are scary things. Visit us online at www.guntalk.com. Call Tom now at 866-TALK-GUN, 866-825-5486. Let us know what you think about the gun-related issues of the day. Now, back to gun talk. All right, we are back with you. Tom Gresham here. Our number is 866-TALK-GUN. That'll get you in here. We've got a guest on hold, but before we get to him, I need to uh, take care of this call because Mike called in on line one from Shreveport, Louisiana with a, an interesting question. Uh, Mike, what are you doing with your hollow point ammo? I would like to find out. Oh, first, love your show. Secondly, I was wanting to find out what you thought about uh, putting wax down in the center of a hollow point. Of a handgun round? Uh, yes, sir. Why would you do that? Uh, in theory, expandability from the heat. Mm. Um, I would say no. Uh, there are several things that would happen. I think one is that if the thing, if the bullet's getting hot going down the barrel, the wax is going to be gone anyway. Uh, so it's not going to be in there. Uh, it's probably not going to do anything. If, if anything, it might even might even plug up the work so that it doesn't expand the way it's supposed to, because it's supposed to have... Uh, the hollow point depends upon hydrostatic pressure or liquids, if you will, uh, making it expand. And so if the liquids can't get in there, if that wax ended up being solid, it could end up working like a full metal jacket or a, a solid and not expanding the way it's supposed to. And thirdly, when you start monkeying around with the ammo... Now you have something else you need to talk about and your lawyer needs to talk about if you do get into a self-defense shooting versus if you just use factory ammo and you don't have to explain why it was made the way it was made. I would avoid it. Good point. So, okay, I, I just wouldn't do it. Just just look, the ammo we have now is so good. Just buy a good quality expanding uh, hollow point bullet, if you will. Uh, Expanding doesn't have to be hollow point, as we talked about. The uh, Powerball, Hornady, uh, Critical Defense, and some others have uh, basically a plug in the front, but those are those bullets are designed to expand with that plug in the front. So, But I would not be modifying my ammo in any form or fashion. I, you know, you just don't need to have that conversation uh, once, if you should ever happen to get into a, a self-defense shooting. Look, Mike, I appreciate the call. I do want to move uh, now to our guest. Keith Morgan is the president of the West Virginia Citizens Defense League, and they are up to their ears in a battle that actually we all need to be involved with. Keith, how are you? I'm doing just fine. All right, the West Virginia Citizens Defense League, you are, right now, you've been pushing and you have a... Uh, a preemption bill on the governor's desk. Is that right? We do, and it's actually uh, the culminating result of a two-year effort that was uh, it, it was it was quite the show last year, and it's become uh, at least as vicious a fight this year uh, for this issue. We've we've got a mayor in our capital city that is just absolutely foaming at the mouth uh, against this bill. And uh, we're working working with our membership and, and uh, you know, marshalling what forces we can to, to help uh, convince our governor to sign the bill. I, I went to your website and saw the, uh, the website, by the way, is uh, wvcdl.org for West Virginia Citizens Defense League dot org. People can go there and see the video of this mayor. You're right. He has just gone off on gun owners, on gun ownership. He's got a sign that says, you know, uh, children would be exposed to strangers carrying guns. I'm thinking, you mean like police officers? Because those are strangers also. Uh, and p- people with concealed carry permits actually commit crimes at a lower rate than police officers. So there you go. Uh, but yeah, because I always love it. People say, well, I'm going to call the police. I said, well, you're going to call a perfect stranger to bring a gun to a situation where you could have had a gun yourself? But put that aside for a minute. Also, you're, this mayor of Charleston, he ends up, implying, at least, that gun rights activists are racist. What's that all about? 
Well, what he's trying to do, the the city of Charleston actually has uh, a couple of rec centers that are in, that they are in lower income areas within mm-hmm. the city. Right. But he's completely ignoring the rec centers that are in higher income areas of the city. So what he's trying to do uh, is basically, without actually using the word race, do a little bit of race baiting to to bring that into the uh, into the discussion with the governor. So the preemption bill. I mean, you have I think it's three cities, including the state capital in West Virginia, that have their own laws about guns. So. You could be legal driving down the road, and as soon as you go into one of those cities, all of a sudden you're illegal and you had no way of knowing it. Well, it's actually far worse than that. There okay. are there are cities throughout the state. There are four main cities that have been in the media, but there are cities throughout the state that have had firearms ordinances, you know, going back into the 60s and 70s. Mm-hmm. And the problem is that it's we believe it's completely unreasonable for a gun owner to go through hundreds of municipal hundreds of municipal code books to try and find those uh, firearms ordinances that it, it essentially are an enforcement minefield for them. You, know, you have no idea when you're going to step on that mine. Sure. No, and most, a great many states do have preemption laws. I'm, I, frankly, I was surprised to learn that West Virginia didn't have one. Uh, so this bill has already passed overwhelmingly in the legislature, right? It passed unanimously in the Senate and something on the neighborhood of 93 to 5 in uh, the House. Uh, so, yeah, if, if, if it is vetoed, I would expect a veto override, which would be embarrassing for our governor. Um, mm. And he actually comes from a very pro-gun county. I, I can't imagine he'd be popular back home if he vetoed it. But I, well, I, I do have to say, this this mayor is, uh, he's stirring up quite the emotional, you know, of course, you take logic out of the situation when you're on, on the anti-gun side of things. And he's whipping up quite a quite an emotional firestorm uh, for the low-information voters that you know, really don't understand gun issues. How how are the media handling this? Are they at least asking decent questions, or are they just buying into the emotion-driven uh, wailing? Well, the the key thing to understand about the media is that fear sells. And if the fear will sell advertising more than any other emotion mm-hmm. you can bring up. So yep. the media is airing the mayor's hype, the doom and gloom. You know, the, it'll be the massacre of children and all these rec centers because guns are allowed. That's, that's a scary, uh, that's, that's scary rhetoric, mm-hmm. and that attracts eyeballs. So, of course, the media uh. is... Uh, giving the mayor as much airtime as he wants, and they're giving the pro-gun side, the logical, the reasonable, the rational side, you know, six seconds here, four and a half seconds there. Right. Well, I just sent out a tweet a little while ago on this, and I said, look, uh, this is something that you could actually get some help from people all over the country. I, in fact, I put out the phone number for the governor's office. I said, look, call the governor, leave a message that says, look, I would love to come to West Virginia to visit and uh, for tourism, but it's just a legal minefield, and I would not feel comfortable in West Virginia because I carry a gun for self-defense because you have this crazy patchwork of laws. If you sign this, I would be much more inclined to come to West Virginia and spend money. Well, and tourism is one of our largest economic sectors here in West Virginia, and that is a valid concern for uh, out-of-staters. It, you know, one of the, I try to understand when I'm traveling, I try to understand the laws in the, my destination states. And if it's a minefield where I don't know what's legal where, I may be more inclined to shift my, my travel destination, you know, my vacation somewhere mm-hmm. else. By the way, that number for the governor's office is 888-438-2731. I'm going to do it again. 888 438 Two seven three one. If you want to call and just leave that message. So, what's it look like? You think he's going to sign this thing? I think it may be political suicide for him to veto it. I am not sure. He may cave to uh, this anti-gun pressure. To give you an idea, money is starting to be poured into this from Bloomberg. Uh-huh. Uh, Mayor Jones just recently joined Mayors Against Illegal Guns. 
uh, looking for, uh, I would assume, financial assistance and, and helping fight this fight. Uh, so we really are not sure. I, I half suspect that the governor will just let it lay on his desk and become law, or he'll veto it. Uh, I, I'm not sure that he'll sign this yeah, without an enormous amount of uh, grassroots pressure from, right. from his constituency and from around the country, really. Well, that's it. That's where the rest of us can help out there. Uh, and also, I would, I'm would i sure you're already on top of this, but what I have found is that people in other states, and we sure saw this in Colorado, they resent the heck out of somebody from New York City coming in and telling them what they ought to do in their state. And they really resent a billionaire from New York coming in and telling them what they ought to do. I would get the word out that, look, now you've got Mayor, former Mayor Bloomberg, three, $33 billion worth coming in and telling you how you ought to live your life because he thinks that West Virginians are stupid. I, I think you'll have a huge backlash, and maybe that would help, too. Well, and, and from a, for, we are definitely uh, utilizing that angle, and we have seen, we've already seen the rumblings because last year we, we got five pro gun bills through last year, and uh, three very solid pro gun bills uh, through our legislature this year, including mm-hmm. preemption. Uh-huh. And we are starting to see the Bloomberg financial tentacles here in this state, and what they do is attempt to buy grassroots support. They, they spend money to try and buy grassroots support. West Virginia, by and large, is a very pro-gun state as far as our populace goes. But we have clusters of, um, I really view it as kind of the, the limousine liberal anti-gun mindset right. in, in the high population centers and around the universities. And, and those forces are well-funded. And they are not, not to be ignored, and they can they can cause real problems. All right. Well, look, uh, Keith. If people want to know more about uh, the West Virginia Citizens Defense League, I guess the website's probably the best place, huh? It, it probably is, uh, and second to that is probably our Facebook group, which you can click. It's right on the top of our website. Okay, and the website is wvcdl.org for West Virginia Citizens Defense League.org. Keep, keep us posted on this, please. Will do. Thank you. All right, you take care. All right, we're open lines. Got something on your mind. What kind of sights do you like? <laughs> if your eyes are getting older, that's something we ought to talk about, too. There are some options for you. 866 Talk Gun. 866 Talk Gun. Tired of overpaying for one concealed carry holster after another that is flimsy, hard to hide, or just plain uncomfortable? At Alien Gear Holsters, less than $30 gets you a professional quality holster that's super stealthy and ultra comfortable. Every Alien Gear Holster is backed by a forever warranty, a 30-day test drive, and free shell trades for life in case you buy a different gun. AlienGearHolsters.com AlienGearHolsters.com Looking for shooting instruction but don't know where to go? Well, we have it, and you can access hours of training and safety videos, which you can watch on your home computer. On GunTalkTV.com, we have top competitive shooters, the best in self-defense trainers, and folks who have hunted all over the world, helping you learn which gun to buy, how to use it, how to store it safely, and everything else you need to be a safe and competent shooter. We also have gun makers showing off their newest rifles, shotguns, and handguns. Doesn't matter if you're a veteran shooter or a complete beginner. You'll find what you need at GunTalkTV.com. You can check it out for free, and you can get full access for only $5.95 a month. That gives you unlimited access to hundreds of videos, and we're adding more all the time. Run the videos over and over to make sure you understand what's being said. Skip around. You're in control. Get smarter, shoot better. Visit GunTalkTV.com. The Ruger American Rifle is a 100% American-made firearm that offers outstanding performance at a great price. Available in standard size and compact models, it features power-bending integral bedding blocks, a Ruger Marksman adjustable trigger, a flush-fit four-round rotary magazine, and a three-lug bolt with 70-degree throw. Compact models feature a shorter length of pull and a shorter barrel for a reduction in overall length of more than five inches. The Ruger American Rifle, another rugged, reliable firearm from Ruger. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. 
It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. All right, we're watching this uh, story that is exploding, unveiling out in California where the ATF has raided Ares Armor, confiscating their computers, their customer list, which is very disturbing, saying that these uh, 80% lowers, AR-15 lowers they've been selling are not 80%, when I think the ATF actually said they were before. The problem, the real scary part is if they get, and they already have since they grabbed the computers, the customer list, then what's to keep them from, in fact, wouldn't you think this is what it's all about? taking those lists and going door to door of everybody who bought one of these, not just in California, but all over the country. People have been buying these 80% lowers and going to a door and knocking on and saying, hey, you've got an illegal gun. And oh yeah, you've got a firearm with no serial number. Oh, that's a felony. Darn, you're going to lose your gun rights for the rest of your life. Hmm, darn. Not to mention maybe a little stay at the club fed. Well... We're not sure how this is going to work out, but it's underway. This is not new. ATF does this. ATS, ATF has done this for 30 plus years. I know a guy who got raided by ATF. They came in with helicopters to his home. Lots of vans, lots of cars, and the local TV guys. They invited them in. Took all of his guns, never found anything wrong, never charged him with a crime, wouldn't give him his guns back until he sued them. That was 30 years ago. In fact, it was uh, recently deceased Congressman John Dingell, a Democrat, who labeled the ATF jackbooted thugs. Wasn't Wayne Lapierre at the NRA? He was a Democrat in Congress years and years ago. So them raiding this place, it's not surprising, but it is frightening. Frankly, I would love to see where's where's the ACLU, where's the media on this. And look, they may come in because it just happened yesterday. We'll keep you posted on that. We were talking about that as we go along here. Eight six six Talk Gun. We'll get you in here. Line three. Larry's with us out of Salt Lake City. Larry, you got copper fouling, eh? Yeah, Tom, I got a Remington 700, and I don't really shoot it, you know, hundreds and hundreds of rounds mm-hmm. when I when I take it out, but it seems like no matter how many times I run a patch through with, I'm using Bush's Borshine, that mm-hmm. darn thing comes out blue. And uh, I got smart, and I finally got myself a, uh, nylon bore brush so that I run the patch through with that instead of my brass jag, because I know that was giving me a false indicator, but it seems like it's still happening, and I, I, I don't know. First of all, is that normal to have to run 30 patches or so through, or is that not normal? And how much do I need to get out? Do I really need to get every uh-huh. stack out? What caliber is it? Uh, 300 Win Mag. Okay. <sighs> There are you got a sliding scale on all this. You want it all out if you want the best accuracy you can get. So there is that. Now you know if you say what's the difference? Is it a tenth of an inch? I don't know, and it may be good enough. If you want it all out, though, it is not unusual at all for it to take that much and a lot more to get uh, copper fouling out, where you're pulling the patch out and it's still blue. Some barrels clean real easily. Some barrels are a pain in the rear to get clean. I'm going to suggest you try a different solvent. I'm going to suggest you uh, get a hold of uh, the Barnes CR10 bore cleaner because Barnes, of course, makes all copper bullets, and they have a solvent that's made specifically for that. 
And then on their website, I was just reading, they're saying, look, do the patch and then alternate that with a, don't push the patch with a uh, a brush. Put it on a jag and then follow it with a bronze brush. And this could take, uh, you know, it could take 50 or 100 patches to get this going. And what I would do is I would run a patch with this solvent and get it clean, you know, as best you can, and then run a patch through it and let it sit for an hour. And then come back and clean it. Let it sit there and work on it. Now, I wouldn't let it sit more than an hour because uh, all of these copper solvents have ammonia in them. And ammonia will attack the steel in the barrel, okay? So you don't want to let it sit overnight, for instance. But uh, alternate with patches, wet patches, and orange brushes until you get a dry patch that comes out and it's clean. But I would, I would recommend you get a hold of this uh, CR10 bore cleaner from Barnes. I think that's going to help. But sometimes it's just elbow grease. It just Some barrels are just a pain to cl- clean out. I wish you luck with it, Larry. Chuck is on, too. He's in Crosby, Texas. Chuck, you got old eyes like mine, huh? Tom, I'm, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> you, 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 can't, you can't explain to the youngsters what it's like, and then when you get there, it's like, oh, my God, this is what those old folks were talking about. Isn't it the truth? Riders and bad eyes and holy Toledo, it's okay, triple so, jeopardy. All right, real quick, what's the question? Red dot or low, are we talking about a uh, handgun or rifle? Well, actually both, and, and you know, I haven't really, I've, I've tinkered a little bit with red dots, but I've never really paid that much attention to them. I thought probably just staying with a low-power glass scope was best, but now they're showing up everywhere, even on handguns, and of course, all these... Here's, here's what I'm going to suggest. On your rifle, go with a low-powered uh, variable scope, something down around the one, one and a half. And on the handguns, look at the red dot sight, something like uh, Trichicon's RMR. Those work really well. And on some rifles, something like an AR, uh, red dot sights work great. And so you got a lot of options, like you say. But I love low-powered variable scope. I just think that is a cat's pajamas. One of Talker Magazine's 100 most important radio talk show hosts in America. You're listening to Gun Talk, heard every week at this time on great radio stations across America. Stay tuned. Gun Talk is coming right back. Covering all aspects of gun ownership every week on this fine radio station. You're listening to Gun Talk with Tom Gresham. We've been talking about this uh, event. It was an ATF raid on a company out in California yesterday. And as I said, this is not something new. ATF has been doing this kind of thing for decades. This is the latest, but there's uh, there's an element to this that takes it to a new level, frankly. That's the Request for and now the confiscation of the records, people who have purchased 80% lowers from Aries Armor. So I ask uh, somebody that really knows this stuff and is really a good commentator on this, really has a good feel for it, to join us. David Kodra is, he writes as the gun rights examiner, also writes his blog, which is War on Guns. He joins us right now. David, how are you? Tom, always great to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I know that you're following this closely, and I don't know if we could connect a lot of dots here, but at least if you would, give us, give everybody kind of your take of what happened and why it's important for everybody to know about this. Well, Aries Armor in Oceanside, and I guess they have a national city location as well, uh, they were raided by ATF. They are a distributor of EP Armory 80% receivers, and apparently there is some controversy because these plas- these polymer receivers have different coloration to allow people to see where to drill to turn this into what ATF considers a firearm. Now, these have not been drilled, and, and ATF has been pretty consistent uh, that it can't be considered a firearm unless a lot of different steps are, are performed, such as milling out the fire control cavity and different things like that, uh, and these are not them. However, 
ATF and, and the political establishment is trying to close down on these things. I think we've seen bills introduced by Kevin Le- DeLeon in California uh, calling these things ghost guns because they can't be traced because there's no serial number because they're not a firearm. Well, ATF made an offer, according to Aries and mm-hmm. according to their attorney, that said, if you turn over these receivers and if you turn over your customer lists, we'll leave you alone. Aries went and got a temporary restraining order from the court in California, which later came back with another order. And this is what made the raid possible, because they said, regardless of the temporary restraining order, it does not restrain lawful criminal proceedings. And, and as soon as we saw that, uh, people I know and use the sources in both the gun industry and, and lawyers said, you know what? a raid is going to happen sooner rather than later. And and sure enough, within two hours of of my publishing my article on it, we got news that there was a video of the uh, Ares uh, armor location in National City being raided. I do want to point out that uh, the owner of Ares armor, the ATF said, look, if you'll just sell out all of your customers, we will leave you alone. And he basically told him to go pound sand and went to the court and got a restraining order, which obviously didn't stop him. But, uh, you know, you, you got to admire the, uh, the, the guts to do that. Yeah, he, he has been consistently a champion of the Second Amendment. You know, the, these people are unapologetic about their defense of the right to keep and bear arms, and that rankles some people the wrong way. So that they had a sign on top of their store in National City, and the city... Uh, government did not like it and they tried to get them to take it down they would not uh the the very fact that they would not cooperate with atf you know you take a look at atf's filing in response to the tro and they are saying that this guy is standing on his rights and they actually called this time they called it a ruse it's unbelievable the arrogance that you see coming from the government but where people are saying, well, how is this possible with a, with a temporary restraining order? What opens the door for that is that the judge issued a follow-up order saying that this will not impact other criminal activity right. or uh, other law does not restrain lawful criminal proceedings. Now, Dave Workman just posted in the Gun Mag an article. He says that 6,000 of these lowers were seized, but he, I guess he uh, spoke to... Uh, the CEO of uh, of Ares, and they did say though that no one so far has been arrested. So let's keep our fingers crossed. I, I know that they are uh, keeping people updated on Facebook and Instagram. This is one of these developing stories that people are watching closely over the weekend. So as things are happening, we're trying to bring them uh, to our readers, to your audience. In about uh, 30 minutes, we'll have Gene Hoffman from Cal Guns Foundation here explaining uh, their take on it. And also, they have a very good uh, piece of advice for people who may have bought these lowers, and ATF may come to their door, knock on the door, and they have some advice on what you should and should not do. And the list of what you should not do is long, and the list of what you should do is very, very short uh, on that one. But... Dave, I I think that's the thing that worries a lot of us because we're looking at this and saying, wait a minute, you t- said that these were legal, eighty percent receivers, just as they told the slide stock owners those are legal. If they come in and say no, they're not, then they go to the manufacturer and the distributor and say, give me the list of everybody that bought them. Now we're going to do the door to door kick in the door deal. It, it 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 sounds exactly like that. That's what they're doing. But Tom, how many times have we seen ATF? reverse themselves. I remember many years ago, I had what was called a Hellfire little trigger switch. Right, it was just right. a little device, and it came with a, with a little note from uh, Firearms Technology Branch saying, this is legal, it doesn't modify your guns. And then all of a sudden they decided, oops, nope, we've, we've changed our mind. The Aikens Accelerator, look at, look at the various things that we've gone through. But here's what's happening, and, and I'm tying this in. I was not ready to publish before your phone call. But I'm getting ready this afternoon. I have got a tie-in to a wider investigation. Now, this is not just the 80% receivers, but this then ties into people who are providing these receivers and then providing facilities to then go around and machine these receivers, and they're doing it for a profit. And I have a letter involving Aries Armor that uh, I'm going to make available, and this comes from the search warrant package that 
the DOJ put together on its affidavit request. And so I'm getting ready to break that this afternoon. And where will they be able to read about that? That will be davidcodria.com, uh, just just my name. Okay, it's, it's david, D-A-V-I-D, C-O-D-R-E-A dot com for people That's that need correct. to read. Okay, I'll be uh, looking forward to seeing that one. David, thank you for all your work on this. Keep us posted. This is one that we all need to get involved in. You know, this is it. People say, well, if they ever, no, they have. They're, they're at the door. They're inside the door. They're picking up the computers. They're getting the list, and they're going to go see the people who bought these. This is happening right now. If you were ever, David, thank you so much. If you were ever wondering, should I really get involved in gun rights? Really? Seriously? If not now, when? 866-TALK-GUNS. What are you going to do when they come to your door? I got some ideas and probably not the ones you think you ought to do. Keep your handgun and other valuables safe in your truck or SUV. Get a vehicle vault from Console Vault. Plate steel, three-point locking system, easy installation. Visit consolevault.com. Successful hunters know big bucks move early and late, often when it's too dark for common scopes. When that monster steps out, you might see him through the scope, but the crosshairs disappear. All that work and you can't take the shot. But with the Trigicon AccuPoint scope, you'll get the shot. Its bright aiming point glows in daylight or darkness. No batteries needed. AccuPoint scopes are water resistant and nitrogen filled, feature multi layer coated lenses for the brightest image, and you can adjust brightness of the aiming point to match the conditions. Adding 10 or 15 minutes to each end of the day can double the magic moments when the trophies move. You can't hit the target if you can't see the sights. Trigicon AccuPoint scopes. Check out the different models at trigicon.com or call 1-800-338-0563. Brilliant aiming solutions from Trigicon. Brownells proudly celebrates 75 years of history and heritage as the world's first choice for firearms, accessories, ammunition, and gunsmithing tools. So whether you're a gunsmith in need of parts and supplies, a new shooter looking for the perfect holster, or a skilled competitor seeking the latest gear, Brownells has what you need. And best of all, every purchase comes with the industry's only forever satisfaction guarantee. Visit us at brownells.com. Traveling with your handgun? The gun transporter from Console Vault protects your gun with plate steel, high security lock, and retractable tether cable. Accessible but secure. Visit consolevault.com. is this Tom Gresham? And what's with all the gun stuff? Check out our FAQs at GunTalk.com or email us your question or concern to Tom at GunTalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk. Before we get to our callers, I do want to comment on this. Uh, I was reading the Cal Gun Foundation recommendations, and we're going to have uh, Gene Hoffman from Cal Gun Foundation on here for too long. But their idea was, they said, look, if uh, ATF comes to your door... You bought one of these lowers, and they want to talk to you, see it, whatever. Basic rule, and I, you have heard me say this for a long time, and I'm not the only one. It's not because I'm anti-government. I love my country. I fear my government, uh, and I certainly fear a lot of the agencies there, and I know some of the tricks they use, but I don't know all of them, and that's the problem. You don't know all of the tricks they use to put you in jail. So if you're speaking to the feds, and this would apply across the board, ATF, FBI, DEA, I don't care who it is. Basic rule is don't. Don't. You don't talk to them. You don't explain. You don't deny. You don't anything. You don't speak. These are the words that come out of your mouth. We're not going to have this conversation. I want to speak to my attorney. Here's the thing. There is a provision in the law, and that's what they got Martha Stewart on. If they can't get you on anything else, they can get you with lying to a federal agent. It's actually against the law to make a misleading statement. So if you said, I've done nothing wrong, 
and they find some kind of small little thing that they could get you on, then you have made a misleading statement to a federal agent. That could end up with six months or more in a federal penitentiary. You say, but no, I can, I can explain. No, you will explain your way into prison. You don't speak. And you make sure everybody in your family knows the rules. It's hard when they're, they're talking and you want to, you know, generally when people are saying, well, what are you, what's the problem? You're not going to let me in? No. By the way, they also said you are not required to open any cases, locked cases. If they got to get a blowtorch to open a safe, they got to get it. But don't you do it. And don't you let them in your house. Don't volunteer. You don't let them in your house. Now, if they got a search warrant, you let them in. But if they ask for permission to come in, it's just like in your car, you don't. I know that sounds, oh, wow, that guy's way out there. He's got his tinfoil helmet on. I'm just telling you, this is how it works, and this is how they get you. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a bit here. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, let's see, John, line, line two. John is with us out of Nevada. Hello, John. Hello, John. Good afternoon. Sure. What's up? Uh, 40, what, what kind hey, of 44 listen, caliber The question I, I have is that uh, 20 years or better when I used to get the American Rifleman magazine, there was an article in there about this guy that I got tired of carrying around two different cartridges, one for his pistol, one for his rifle. Mm-hmm. Well, he went to uh, a rifle and a pistol that shot the same cartridge. It was a pistol round. And I forget where the manufacturer was through... Uh, Marlin or who it was is mm-hmm. that is that possible? Because I can't remember. Yeah. Whether. Yeah. L- l- let me explain. Yeah, it's not only possible; it's great fun, uh, particularly if you get a lever action rifle in a say a forty four magnum or a three fifty seven magnum, or possibly I wonder if they ever made the forty four Colt. Uh, but it, say say you've got a forty four magnum rifle and a forty four magnum revolver. You can certainly shoot the same ammo in both of those, but with one thing to be aware of. There is some specialty ammo loaded for 44 Magnum that's loaded only for really strong rifles, and you would not want to put it in your handgun. But it'll be labeled that way, something like Garrett cartridges or, or maybe some of the loads from uh, Double Tap. I'm not sure uh, if Mike is doing that. But anything that's okay, it's sold across the counter, you can shoot in both. The other thing you can do, and this is where it got, gets to be fun, is you could also shoot 44 Special in those. If you had a rifle that was chambered for 357 Magnum, you could shoot 38 Special in that, just as you can with your revolver. So, yeah, it's a cool thing to do, and uh, I know a lot of people who do that. So, uh, And I'm just scratching my head. Maybe somebody will call me and fill me in. Is somebody making a lever action rifle in 45 Colt, i.e., long Colt, but it's actually just 45 Colt? So I'm wondering there. Speaking of lever actions, let's go to line three. Jeff is in Chicago, wants to know about a Marlin. Do you have a Marlin there, Jeff? I do. I have a Marlin 39A that I purchased mm-hmm. new, and ever since I purchased the gun, it has never really fed as well, fed rounds into it as well as I would like to with different types of ammunition, with long rifle, with shorts, etc. And I've had it back to the factory twice. It's never, it's never come back to, to my satisfaction. And I'm wondering if there's a gunsmith that specializes in 39As that you would know of that I could send this thing to. I am not sh- – well, first of all, I am sure there is such a gunsmith. I just don't know who that is. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to ask for help. Uh, I gar- and I don't know if it would be like D- Doug Turnbull or – I don't know. I just don't know. But I'm going to ask for help. And if you'll keep listening, Jeff, we're going to uh, get some people to call in and help me out. So here's what we're looking for, guys. Who can do a real nice tune-up job on a Marlin 39A for Jeff? And I, Doug Turnbull does beautiful restorations. I don't know if they could do that. But if you have somebody in mind, somebody you've heard about, or maybe even better, somebody you've used, then call me, 866-TALK-GUN. Help Jeff out. Help me out, because I'm not able to help Jeff on this one. It's like I say, none of us can know everything, but all of us put together, we know pretty much all of it. 866-TALK-GUN. Help me out. Gun Talk stands for safety, personal responsibility, and common courtesy. To be a part of the show, call 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Gun Talk will be right back. Hi, 
All right, back with the 866-TALK-GUN. We'll get you in here. A lot of people uh, scratching their heads and actually, uh, probably like me, concerned a lot about this deal with Aries Armor out in California, ATF raid out there. We'll be talking a little bit more about that uh, after the top of the hour break. We'll have uh, Gene Hoffman from the Cal Guns Foundation because they're right out there and they're on top of this. In the meantime, let's see here. I wanted to get Brian, line four from Salt Lake City in here. Hey, Brian. Hey, how you doing? I am good. I have a, a couple of questions, actually. Uh, Tiger's article actually changed my mind a few weeks ago on AR pistols. Uh-huh. So it's good having him on today. And I've been thinking about doing a build, but there's all these uh, goofy ATF rules. Like, you know, I have some receivers I bought a while back, but I mean, going back and trying to figure out if they're even legal for a pistol is difficult. Yeah. So then it's about doing the 80% build, but then your Aries story makes it worrisome. I was going to get your thoughts. Man, I know what I would do. I'd I'd buy an AR-15 pistol. <laughs> I, <laughs> That's I, I mean, way to do it. I, you know, I mean, honestly, I I know where you are. You're thinking, and I just was looking up during the break here because uh, I knew this question was coming about building an AR-15 pistol. It's involved, and you really got to know what you're doing. You got to do it the right way. There are you could end up building something that puts you in the same position as having an unregistered full automatic gun if you don't do it the right way which puts you in serious Please. violation of ATF regs. Uh, if it were me, and I'm, somebody may be able to help out here, but uh, if it were me, I would just buy an AR-15 pistol and be happy. All right, that's probably the way to do it. Thank you. All right, good luck with that one. Let's see, i got to get Joe in here on line one. Hey, Joe, you're in. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. I think the Aries problem or question kind of... Um, Put into perspective the whole idea that the um, the problem with the ATF uh, enforcement is that it, it's a, a matter of the honor. Um, uh, it's the honor system as far as our compliance. So we have to demand as much honor from the ATF. And I think uh, I was calling about basically the their, their slow approvals on Class 3. I think it should be. I think the main office uh, that that handles that approval is in New York as well. And, it's it's, take, uh, it's taking it's taking it's taken about a year at this point to get uh, approval on uh, uh, these class three things. Unless you do now, they do have the new electronic, uh, basically e file, if you will, system, and that's much faster. But I, we don't get to demand. We can demand all we want to on ATF. At least at this point, we don't have any power to do anything. You know, and wh- I'll tell you why that is. It's because we, gun owners, don't take action. We, we just don't. By the way, we had a caller, uh, Tom in Hemphill, Texas, said uh, for Marlin Gunsmithing, Rimfire Central, but I don't know who Rimfire Central is, so that doesn't help me out. Uh, if I had more information on that, I would pass it along, guys. So, uh, you know, I don't know what that is. Is that a gunsmith? Is that a website? What is Rimfire Central? So anyway, but if you're looking for help, maybe you can Google it up and find something there. No, here's the thing. Gun owners, we got 100 million of us. Only 5 million belong to the NRA. Of that, how many actually make contributions more than their membership? What if you could get 10% of the gun owners to each contribute, pick a number, 100 bucks? Ten times a hundred. That would be a lot of money. We could get a lot of stuff done. We could change things. But it doesn't happen in mass. It only happens one at a time. What are you willing to do? Coming up, we'll be getting some more news on this raid, ATF raid out in California. It's in California, but it affects all of us because they're rounding up names and then they're going to go door to door. Could be your door is the next one they knock on. Firearms. Ammunition, recreational and competitive shooting, training, hunting, and yes, even politics. You're listening to Gun Talk. Call us now at 1 866 825 5486. That's 1 Tom Talk Gun. Or reach out to us via email at tom at guntalk.com.